Hi there, my name is Ralph Kaina and in this video I'll give a brief overview of the tag framework showing how to do, go about beginning to implement a new game. In this case I'll be implementing the game dots and boxes which starts with a two-dimensional grid with dots in the corners of all grid cells. Players then take turns drawing lines between the dots, gaining points when they draw the last edge of a cell and also getting another turn. The player with the most points at the end wins. This video is structured in five parts, starting with setting up the project and base files for a new game. Then we'll look at implementing the game state and four model classes, including all the state representation and game logic respectively. We'll then finish registering our new game in the framework and run it. Finally, we'll do a bit of customization of the graphical user interface for a better display of our game and let the artificial players have some fun. First thing first, we need to set up the project. You'll need to download the code from GitHub if you haven't already done so, and open it in your ID of choice. I'm using IntelliJ here. It's important to note that this is a Maven project, so make sure it is all set up appropriately. Next, make sure that you can run the framework by opening the game class in the core package. You'll find its main method at the bottom of the file, which you can run to make sure that everything compiles. We'll start our game implementation by registering it in the framework, which is done in the game type class in the games package. Here we need to add a new enum value with our game and corresponding mechanics and categories. Then we can create a new sub package for our game in the games package and add here the core classes of the game. The game state, the forward model and the game parameters. All of these should extend from the corresponding abstract classes in the framework and implement all suggested methods. The game's parameters class is not essential, but we can store here and then easily modify later the grid width and grid height in our example. In the second part of this tutorial, we'll implement the state representation and all methods required for the game state. I start by modifying the constructor as we can make use here of the ready-made alternating turn order from the framework, which will repeatedly iterate to the players in the game. Our main state representation is a grid board with specific cell objects, which we'll further customize. So we'll create a new cell object, which in this game needs to keep track of its owner or the player who completed it, minus one meaning the cell is not complete, a list of edges, the cell's position in the grid, and the number of edges completed for this cell, a variable simply used for faster computation. We then finish the constructor of this class by initiating all variables to their starting state. For cell edges, we keep track of the two points between which the line is drawn and the owner of the edge, where minus one here means that the edge does not yet exist on the board. We add equals and hash code methods so that the class is compatible with hash maps, and we modify the default options provided by the IDE to show that the owner is not important in this comparison and that the edge does not have a direction. We also add copy methods in both the edge and cell classes so that we can make deep copies of the board. Finally, we add some more variables in the game state class to help speed up computation. However, the grid board is our only component and we can return this in the get all components method. In the copy method, we copy all variables, making sure to keep deep copies of the board to avoid accidentally modifying the wrong game states. We can also recreate the mapping from edge to all neighboring cells. We do not define a scoring function for now. No components are hidden in this game, so we return an empty list in the getUnknownComponentIDs method. We can then add all variables in the reset function in their initial state with no values and use the IDE to generate our equals function for us, transferring the contents into the one required by the framework.
In the third part, we are looking at the FOIA model. We start by implementing the setup function, which needs to initialize the grid board in the game state received. We'll keep handy variables for our custom game state and game parameters classes for this. We can then initialize the grid board according to the game's parameters. and then set up our mapping from edges to neighboring cells so that we can easily find these later, as well as the initial state for each particular cell with our custom constructors. Lastly, we initialize all other variables in the game state. To compute the next game state, Given an action, we'll first keep track of the current number of completed cells to check if the current player finished one through their action and gets another turn. We can then execute the action within the game state received and then check our end of game condition. In this case, the game ends when all cells have been completed. If the game is over, we need to set the game status to game end and then find the winner and set the corresponding player results. If the game is not over, we check if the action did not complete a new cell, in which case we move to the next player according to our turn order. The copy function can just return an instance of this object. Finally, we need to compute the actions available for a player in a given game state. In this game, actions are drawing lines between the dots or placing edges of cells on the grid board. This action does not exist in the framework yet, so we create a new class that extends from the abstract action class and we'll implement the actual logic of our action. The action is to place an edge on the grid, so we need to keep track of this edge. This action is always successfully executed. And to mark this edge as placed, we need to find the neighboring cells in the grid board for our specific edge and then mark this specific edge as completed in those particular cells by setting the owner of the edge to the currently acting player. We'll also check here if adding this edge completes any of the neighboring cells and increase the respective counters in the game state. We finish our action by adding its copy method and the equals and hash code methods as generated by the IDE. And finally, we add a simple string in the getString method for any printing purposes. With this class finished, we can complete the action computation in the for model by iterating through all grid cells and finding those cell edges which do not yet exist in the board. using them to create our action objects. As edges may border more than one cell, we need to actually store these in a hash set instead to avoid duplicating actions and transform this 
to a list at the end. Now it's time to finish registering the game in the game type class within the games package, adding cases for our new game in the string to game type, create game instance, and finally create GUI methods. In this last method, we'll use the prototype GUI class that's already available in the framework to display our game. With everything set up, we can go back to the game class in the core package and run our new game. But this doesn't look the best just yet. A simple fix is to adjust the to string method in our cell class and print its owner so that we can see when a cell has been completed. So you will see some numbers changing here from minus one to the player's ID when they complete the cell. However, this is still hard to read and it's hard to see all of the information we'd like. So in this last part of the video, I will customize our game's GUI a bit more by copying over the prototype classes for the prototype GUI and also the grid board view and modify these to suit our particular use case a little bit better. So in the main GUI class, we need to remove several variables that are not actually needed in our case. So everything will be much more simplified. Our view is simply a grid board view and we do not require anything other than the info panel at the top, which shows the current round and the current player acting and so on. In our update function, we just need to update our grid board view to pass on the new game state. And with everything set up, we just do a quick check that everything still runs appropriately, and it does. So we can go into the grid board view and modify how the cells are being drawn so that we're actually drawing the dots and boxes game. You've seen me put a new variable at the top for the size of the dots. And now for each of the cells, we are going to start by painting their backgrounds according to the color of the particular owner. Then we are going to draw four dots in the corner of each of the cell. And we are going to draw the cell owner in the middle of the cell just to keep track of the particular IDs. For the edges, we're going to be drawing them uh, if they exist. And if they do exist, we're going to use the color of the particular owner to display them. And now the game looks like this. There is actual colors going on and it's much easier to tell which player has placed what edge and where. But we can do a little bit better by moving all of the grid a little bit more to the right and down so that we can see the lines on the very edges of the grid a bit more clearly. And now we can run the game to see the agents actually play this to completion. And if we look back into the game class, we can match up the player IDs that we're seeing on the board with the order in which we've added the players in the player's array list. And that's it. The game is fully implemented and can be played by humans as well, although the graphical user interface might need further customization to allow for more intuitive human interaction such as selecting two dots between which to draw the line. But these are all the basics required for the game and it is now fully compatible with all the AI players and game analysis systems in the framework. The implementation took about an hour in real time, so it is very quick and easy to get a new game fully set up in the framework. If you found this interesting, please check out the project on GitHub and associate publications linked. Thank you for watching and have a great rest of the day.